My name is Dr. Stephanie Logan, and I am the executive director of Deaf Lead. Uh, Deaf Lead is an organization located in Missouri, and we provide statewide and actually nationwide services uh, to deaf victims of crime, actually deaf, hard of hearing, late deaf into deaf blind victims of crime. We also uh, can provide services to hearing individuals. Uh, I've been the executive director for 25 years here at Deaf Lead. Uh, I have my PhD in counseling psychology and my master's in business administration. And so I'm a psychologist, a deaf psychologist. Today, I will actually be speaking my presentation. A lot of people are like, we just, you're deaf, but you're speaking for yourself. So how does that work? Well, I lost my hearing when I was 23 years old to spinal meningitis. So uh, I lost my hearing post-lingually. Uh, I went through uh, over four years of speech therapy and I worked very hard on my speaking ability. I also have five children uh, and I talk to them all the time, uh, but I am fluent in American Sign Language and, uh, and so that is primarily how I communicate but because um, I can speak, I am making that option for myself to speak today, uh, this presentation. Uh, so uh, we'll, we'll get on with it. So, uh, it's interesting how this sort of this presentation came to being. Uh, I was in a regional meeting for MCDSV uh, and I was talking about um, this idea of stacking and I'll talk about that more in a minute, but I was talking about this idea of stacking and, and uh, uh, Nora Mosby, who works at MCDSV, um, asked me, she said, hey, that was really great. You know, I, I was wondering if you'd be willing to do that for other regional program, regional meetings um, and, and talk about that whole stacking idea we sort of talked about it some more and we, we, uh, we came up with some ideas and I said, well, I could talk about vicarious trauma. I'm a psychologist. We're in my wheelhouse. Uh, so I could talk about vicarious trauma and all feeds into all of it. And ultimately we're, we're talking about self-care. And so Nora came back, kind of came back to me in emails with, with various titles for this presentation. And, and uh, so she came up with new strategies for providing safe and inclusive services new strategies for providing safe and inclusive services. Let me first say that nothing that I talk about today is gonna be new. None of this is my stuff. Uh, this, is, this is all stuff that uh, we should be aware of. Uh, so it's strategies, number one, you can think about for self-care or uh, uh, management of vicarious trauma or whatever title that you wanna give this. And I'm sure that MCADSD will come up with something lovely. Uh, but there's nothing new about what I'm going to talk to you about today. It may be a new way of thinking about it or a new way of presenting it. And I love that. I love experiencing and, and getting exposed to different kinds of um, ways of thinking about something that, you know, I've known, I've been exposed to for 25 years, but now all of a sudden um, I have a new way of thinking about it. Um, we are live and, and or, you know, I, we're taping this now. And I, so I do want to let you know that, uh, hopefully everything will go off without a hitch. Um, but I have three dogs, uh, on top of having kids, I have three dogs. And so let's cross our fingers that, um, they don't go bananas while we're attempting to do this filming. All right. So let's talk about this whole idea of stacking that sort of started this whole process in the first place. So several months ago, um, post COVID going remote, uh, several months ago, one of my social workers and I were talking about life. COVID life and just how much things had changed. And we were talking about it in terms of, of stacking. And so let, let me explain it. Um, on a normal day, we deal with stacks. Okay. So, uh, and by the way, we manage them fine or mostly fine on any given day. So let's talk pre-COVID. Um, you wake up in the morning and you get out of bed and what's the first thing you do? Maybe, uh, you know, you go to the bathroom and there's no toilet paper. All right, now we've just added to our stack. So just waking up in the morning, let's just, let's just call that a stack. That's starting your stack. Tough enough to get up in the morning. Now you've gone to the bathroom and there's no toilet paper. We've added to our stack. That might be a small ad. And so you reach around and, and you get the toilet paper from wherever you have it. You stick it on the roll. All right, now that's kind of down. And then you get in the shower and you get in the shower and the soap that you'd been using is now, it's this big and it's falling apart as you use it. Now your stack is back up. You've got to go out of the shower. You got to get the soap and then, 
but you get the soap, you're back in the shower, and it goes back down again. And our day kind of goes to that. You get out, you go for the toothpaste, no toothpaste. I'm going to have to go to Walmart later. All of these things. I go, I have coffee, no coffee. End of the world, right? So the stack keeps getting higher and higher. If you have children, uh, maybe they go to school, they forgot their backpack. Uh, on your way back home, you get a flat tire. So these stacks may be bigger, things you put on top of it, or they may be smaller, but still they add up through the day. And, and typically we have the coping skills and the self-care strategies in place to reduce our stacks so that we're not completely overwhelmed and become despondent by the end of the day, right? And so that's really significant. Now let's talk about post COVID. So now we've, we've, we're, we're no longer uh, in the office and dealing with that. Now we're dealing, we're talking about from March on. And we have our stacks, but we have our stacks in the middle of a pandemic where life is completely altered for so many of us, if not all of us. And so we're having to learn how to manage our stacks in a way that none of, our, none of us are equipped to manage like we did before. We have to alter how we think about and manage our daily lives. And if we don't, we can quickly become overwhelmed. So <clears throat> this can put us in crisis, right? So now let's shift away from the stacking idea and let's start talking about vicarious trauma. So we have these terms that we throw around as uh, service providers. So, you know, I am not only a clinician, but I'm also an advocate. I do crisis intervention. You know, so right now I'm assuming I'm speaking to individuals who work within victim services or um, are impacted by victim services or something like that. And so uh, vicarious trauma specifically speaks to you. You may think about it as compassion fatigue, um, secondary uh, traumatic stress. Uh, some people call it job burnout. It's a very different category and, and everyone can be exposed to some form of job burnout. But vicarious trauma, compassion fatigue, uh, that really touches on, specifically with vicarious trauma, uh, providers uh, working with individuals who've experienced trauma. So we're talking about, actually originally when that term came um, uh, was developed, it was looking at psychotherapists working with individuals who had managed trauma. Uh, but uh, it has since come to include uh, any first responder or any individual working with someone who is a victim of a trauma. So it could be clergy, it could be healthcare professionals. Um, so lots of different people fall into that. So Beth Stom and Charles Figley, they looked at why providers exhibited symptoms similar to PTSD without having been exposed to direct trauma themselves. And what they found was women experience it more than men. I don't think that's gonna be a big surprise, right? Women are more empathetic, right? Women are more reactive to other people's emotions and women are more likely to experience caretaker burden. So, What's compassion fatigue? So we, we throw these terms around like they're the same. Compassion fatigue is the natural result of working with traumatized clients and losing sight of taking care of ourselves. So we work with people who are victims all the time and we lose sight of taking our, care of ourselves. That's compassion fatigue. It differs from vicarious trauma because while the caregiver does experience physical and emotional exhaustion, so I'm exhausted, I am overwhelmed at the end of the day working with a number of individuals who've been victims of crime, it doesn't typically cause symptoms of trauma or end in changing my worldview. That's the difference. Someone who's experiencing vicarious trauma does tend to have symptoms of, uh, of trauma um, and oftentimes it ends up changing their worldview. And so that's what we want to watch out for. So let's talk about PTSD, so that we're all on the same, same page, post-traumatic stress disorder. 
it's interesting. A lot of people say, oh, sure, I know what PTSD is. I know that. But when you really get down to brass tacks, do they really understand what PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, is? And it can happen when you are triggered by a terrifying event by either experiencing it or witnessing it. Let me say that again. PTSD can happen when you are triggered by a terrifying event by either experiencing it or witnessing it. Now, I want you all to think about what we're dealing with right now, COVID. Everybody right now on some level is experiencing the, the event of COVID, right? People are having difficulty adjusting or coping, and that's when PTSD becomes a diagnosis, right? So here's what that, what, what that looks like. Recurring memories of the event, nightmares, loss of interest, emotional numbness, anger, irritability, constantly on guard, avoidance, increased arousal, or severe anxiety, okay? Vicarious trauma isn't just your response to one person or one story or one situation. It's very important to understand. It's a cumulative effect of contact with survivors of violence or disaster or people who are struggling. So it's cumulative, not just one story. One story, vicarious trauma, I have vicarious trauma, no. It's accumulation of that over time. So for providers who've been working multiple years, it, it is unusual to find individuals in the movement for as long as people like Colleen and myself and Laura Zahn have been um, engaging in services for victims of crime. It happens because you care. It happens because you feel committed and responsible and at times not able to fulfill that commitment. Like right now, uh, it can lead to high expectations and often unrealistic expectations um, of yourself and others. Your sense of commitment and responsibility can eventually contribute to you feeling burdened, overwhelmed, and helpless when dealing with great need and suffering. It can lead to you extending yourself beyond what is reasonable for your own well-being. The reality is, is that, you know, we want to do it all and, and we want to be there for everybody and we want to solve everyone's problems. And, and the reality is we can't always do that. And right now we're in this sort of uh, post COVID, you know, uh, way of thinking about the world and managing our services. And so we're putting unrealistic expectations on ourselves. A key component of vicarious trauma can deeply impact the way you see the world and your deepest, see, uh, deepest sense of meaning and hope, like connections to your spirituality. Now let's talk about risk factors for developing vicarious trauma, because is everybody going to experience vicarious trauma? And the answer to that question is no. So what puts you at a greatest, greater risk factor for experiencing vicarious trauma? First, it's a personal history of trauma. Um, that makes you have a higher risk of vicarious trauma. Added stress in your life, like right now, and a lack of connection with meaning, purpose, or hope. That idea of why bother? What I'm doing isn't making a difference anyway. People are going to do what they're going to do. Um, I'm not changing anything. I, I have no impact. So why bother? And that puts us at greater risk for vicarious trauma. So what are common signs for vicarious trauma? And this is really important because you may think, oh, well, that just because I have those symptoms, I don't necessarily have vicarious trauma. And that's true. But we have to do an inventory. We have, and this is actually the sign for it in sign language. It's sort of an inventory. We have to sort of investigate inside of ourselves, you know, what's going on? And could this potentially be vicarious trauma? First common sign, let's talk about our emotions. So difficulty managing your emotions, like persistent feelings of grief, anxiety and sadness, 
irritability and anger, being easily distracted, changes in mood or sense of humor, feeling isolated and feeling unsafe. Right? Difficulty managing, making good healthy decisions. Um, things like increased drinking and substance abuse, changes in eating and sleeping habits, risky behavior, okay? So that's number two. Number three, problems managing your boundaries between yourself and others. For example, taking on too much, having trouble leaving work at the end of the day, and that includes now, if you're working remotely, like I'm still working remotely, we closed our facility, we're still providing services and have the entire time, but in March, uh, we went remote with all of our services. And uh, so not being able to leave at the end of the day. Micromanaging other people's lives. That's a big one. Feeling overly responsible for others. I'm the only one that can work with this victim. I'm the only one that can do this. I'm the only one they'll work with. If you find yourself saying those things, those are not good boundaries. Thinking people can't manage without you. And I'll tell you, this list could go on and on and on. And I see it over and over again, particularly with service providers working with victims of crime. Problems in relationships, personal, work, family, avoiding people or your favorite activities. Physical problems, such as aches and pains and illnesses, accidents, increased incidence of headaches, rashes, ulcers, heartburn, or other signs of physical illnesses. Uh, another symptom, having problems feeling connected to what's going on around you and within you. Uh, like increased cynicism and negativity, inability to concentrate and make decisions, memory problems, inability to stop thinking about the trauma others have experienced. So you're constantly perseverating on uh, the, the, the stories that other people have told you. And then finally, loss of meaning of hope, loss of sense of purpose, your personal sense of purpose in life, feeling disconnected from others and the world just in general, feeling unworthy or undeserving of love. And this literally connects to our spiritual core. You know, this is really critical to understand. Vicarious trauma isn't the responsibility of the client. Your vicarious trauma, it's not the responsibility of the client. I think we can all go, okay, yeah, it's not. And it's not the responsibility of the agency that you work at. Let me say that again. It is not, your vicarious trauma is not the responsibility of the agency that you work at. However, they should have good policies in place and a work setting that fosters client and staff well-being. We are responsible for our own self-care. We need to reflect on the work that we do and reach out for consultation when needed. I'll tell you, I have colleagues that I use and MCADSV are on the top of that list. And I have folks at MCADSV that I actually go to um, when I have issues that I'm dealing with with a client or um, if I am struggling with something emotionally, uh, there are people at MCADSV that I reach out to and have uh, for support. I have people that reach out to me uh, as a psychologist, a lot of individuals out there who are providing the services, they know that I'm a psychologist and so they will connect with me. And it, it's very important that I'm taking care of my own self-care so that when I'm talking to other people that I'm actually practicing what I preach. Here's the deal, guys. There are no quick fixes. Solutions are complicated and they're individualized. There's no cookie cutter, cookie cutter answers. Nothing that I'm gonna to say today is gonna to be a one size fits all for everybody. I can't say what will work for one will work for all of you. We have to each do our own work and be committed to it. Cheryl Richardson, uh, she's an author. I don't know if you're familiar with her work, but she wrote a book called Take Time for Your Life. And she says something I absolutely love. Uh, it's a pet peeve of mine, not only for myself, but for my children. 
Don't confuse difficult choices with no choice. We always have a choice. Uh, there's too much at stake for ourselves and for the people that we serve to ignore compassion fatigue or vicarious trauma. When you practice self-care, the reality is everybody benefits. You do and the people you work with, the people that work with you, meaning your, your, your staff, the employees that work with you, the clients that you serve, um, the people that are around, the lady at Walmart that you go and you get your food from, they benefit as well. It's your responsibility to take care of yourself. How can we expect the people that we work with to do this if we aren't willing to do this ourselves? Coping with vicarious trauma means identifying strategies uh, that can help it from becoming severe and help manage it during times when it can become problematic, like right now. So you have to develop coping strategies for taking care of yourself. And don't forget, it is a choice, okay? So there are three things that you can do to manage vicarious trauma, compassion fatigue, stacking, which is what I started out with. Three things, and I, and, I, and, I, and I have a way that I label it. And the first one is tap out, tap out. Think of it as escape. I'm gonna tap out. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna take a moment, I'm gonna tap out. Give me a moment, it can be more than that. So let me, let me say, get away from it all, guys. Physically or mentally, tap out. Books, films, take a day or a week off from work, Play video games. I actually, I have three games right now that I'm, I absolutely love. Uh, and they're, I guess they're not video games. They're, the, the, you know, on your phone. Uh, I play Toy Blast. So anybody who knows what Toy Blast is, I love it. Uh, I play Solitaire, which is the traditional game, Solitaire. And I have gotten hooked on a brand new game, killing me. It's called Match 3D. I am telling you, if when you were a kid, you liked matching games, uh, this is the app for you. Uh, Y'all are gonna punch me in the nose after you try this, if you are a person who likes to do things on your phone. It's called Match 3D, uh, and I, it's, it's turned my world upside down. It's my tap out. If I need to tap out, Match 3D. Uh, talk to your friends about things other than work. Tap out, go outside, go outside. Um, one of the things that I've done since we've been dealing with, with COVID and, 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 I, and we've been working from home, we actually bought these brand new chairs to sit out on the, on the deck. And, um, and I literally will go out on the deck, tap out. If I need a breather, I tap out and I go out there and, um, and I take a few minutes to literally pay attention to what is in my backyard. And I will go through it. I will go, we have green grass and our wood pile needs to be fixed and our we have a fence and there is a chipmunk on our fence whatever it is but i am intentional about going outside i am not just tapping out but i'm intentional about tapping out look at the weather conditions and locations that you love this is another thing that i do all day long i have weird things i do all day long uh i have live webcams on my phone to places uh, the world. And I do this uh, because I love snow. <laughs> it is a thing. I love it very much. I am not a, uh, a sun person. I am, we are moving into my seasons. Uh, so I have live webcams pulled up for Barrow, Alaska, which is the northernmost point of Alaska. Uh, I, I see the webcam for there. I have a webcam in Martha's Vineyard in Edgartown. Uh, it's where the ferry comes in. Uh, my wife and I had the opportunity to go to uh, Edgartown uh, a few years ago, and it was life-changing for me. And so if I ever get the opportunity to retire, you will find me in Edgartown. I will tell you, if I can ever take Deathly on the road, I'm going to be in Edgartown, and that's where I'll be providing services from. Uh, Yakutsk, Russia, is another uh, location. It's 280 miles south of the Arctic Circle. Uh, their average temperature is negative 8 degrees. Uh, you know, Ashford, Washington is another webcam. Uh, and it happens to be snowing in Ashford in the mountains today. And I've been watching uh, some of the snow happen. So when I need to tap out, that's what I do. So well, number two, 
chill out, rest. So tap out is escape. Chill out is rest. Do things that you find relaxing. Lie down in the grass. If that's your thing, I know lots of sun people like to lie down in the grass. Watch clouds, sip a cup of tea, take a nap, literally just lay down. Uh, put a cold washcloth on your head. Do a face mask. Uh, drink a glass of cold water. Uh, have a glass of wine, although I will say I do not endorse during the work day, drinking a glass of wine. But if you're an agency like ours and it's 24 seven, uh, you're drinking on the job regardless. Close your eyes, guys. Just close your eyes. Uh, get a meditation app, right? Get a meditation app. Here's the thing. Uh, we got eye watches. We got eye watches uh, as a way to, um, uh, when we're working, be able to know when we have an emergency situation. So we have eye watches. And my eye watch tells me, this is hilarious, it actually tells me when to breathe. So when I need to breathe, it actually vibrates. And then I look at it and it says, breathe. And that's what I'm doing. So uh, I have found ways to chill out. We got tap out, we got chill out. And the final one is funk out. Funk out, play, play, just play. Find ways, do things that make you laugh or lighten your spirits. Share funny stories with people. Play with a kid if you have one around. Steal one from a neighbor if you have to for an afternoon. Maybe kids are not your thing, so that would be the furthest thing that you would want to do. Be creative. I've got a 17-month-old. I'd be happy to Zoom with you, and he is adorable. Play. Um, uh, be creative. Exercise. If that's the way that you play or, or, or how you help yourself, do it. Uh, crayons. I love to color. Uh, weird fact about me. Uh, I write right-handed, but I color and paint and draw left-handed. I was left-handed and I broke my right arm when I was a kid. And so I write primarily right-handed because that was back in the days when a cast would stay on for forever. Um, so draw, do something with drawing. Um, my mom rug hooks. I don't know if you know what rug hooking is. It's not the little Snoopy rug hooks. It's like wool and craziness. But that's her 80-year-old self. That's her chill out, or that's her funk out, I'm sorry. Dance it out. If you watch Grey's Anatomy, dance it out. Comedy podcasts are great. Have a Zoom happy hour with friends. Um, great way to connect with people, and it's a great way to funk out at the end of the day. So tap out, chill out, funk out. Three great ways to manage self-care and to deal with vicarious trauma. Your thoughts can be your greatest support or your greatest enemy. It's important to identify your own cynical and negative beliefs and challenge them. In psychology, we call it cognitive restructuring. You know, you're gonna take a look at your negative thought patterns and restructure them or reframe them. Thought patterns affect your emotions, which can affect your behaviors. We need to focus on not just coping with vicarious trauma, but transforming trauma. And this is deeper than just, than just coping with it. We need to find ways to nurture a sense of meaning and hope. Remember, that's at the core of who we are. Remind yourself of the importance of the work that you're doing. This is essential. Stay connected to your people. Don't tap out from your people, your friends, your family, your coworkers. Make sure you're staying connected. Stop yourself and pay attention to the little things. And this has become something I've, I've become very good at. A beautiful flower, the sky, uh, the smell of summer, snow, your pets, watching or listening to the wind in the trees. I watch the wind in the trees. Y'all want to listen to them. We're going into my COVID time where I'm excited. I hope we have a ton of snow. Mark transitions, great joys, mourn losses. Don't gloss over these moments. Go through the traditions and rituals of ceremonies involved with all of these events. And take time to reflect. Journal, read, pray, meditate, and process. I've said this 
as I'm sure probably other people have, but this is a marathon, not a sprint. We're in this for the long haul. And whether COVID is over tomorrow, we blink our eyes and suddenly miraculously, we have some sort of something that's going to make it so that we can go back to a pre-COVID existence in some form or another. Um, but regardless, working in the field that we work in, as long as you're in it, it's a marathon and not a sprint. Take care of yourself and everybody wins. Set the example. I really appreciate the opportunity that I've had today to present for you all. Uh, I hope that uh, some of what you've learned today is something that's uh, a golden nugget that you take away. Chill out, tap out, funk out. Don't, don't forget those three things. Managing vicarious trauma, self-care. Chill out, tap out, funk out. If during this whole presentation or at any time you have something you want to ask me about or you have a question or you want to uh, uh, talk to me uh, about something that I've talked about uh, or something that you're dealing with, do not hesitate to do that. Uh, you can email me at drlogan, so Dr. Logan, drlogan at deaflead, D-E-A-F-L-E-A-D dot -E -E com. Uh, you can also contact MCADSV at 573-634-4161. Uh, you can also go to their website and they have a listing of, of uh, emails that you can contact. Um, and I believe that they're going to provide that information as, for you as well at the end. So thank you so much. I've really enjoyed it. Take care.